I'm going to talk about uh, FIB optimization on WAN edge routers. Um, if you take a typical WAN network design, you have multiple WAN edge routers connecting upstream pure ISPs that is providing the internet transit service connectivity, potentially some connectivity of your peering service. So if you compare the conventional WAN edge router and the typical top of the rack switch like Dell S6000, we have high speed links, 10, 40 gig links on both, and we have um, BGP, MPLS, QoS support on both. And if you see the difference, CAM is less in top of the rack switch compared to conventional edge routers. Typically, these WAN edge routers are large routers. So how can we replace this WAN edge routers with the top of the rack switch like Dell S6000 running OS 10? So if you see the internet, the internet contains about 500,000 IPv4 routes, and it is still growing. However, not all routes are active at all point of time. Only 2 to 3% of routes are active at one point of time. So the remainder of the routes are very low level in connectivity. So carrying as an explicit route in the hardware is not needed. So if we install that top 2 to 3% of the routes onto the hardware, and the remainder of the routes, either we can default route it to the transit AS, we can optimize it like 80 to 90% or 90 to 95 percent of the internet traffic optimally. So how are we going to do that? So this is the typical block diagram. We have a WAN edge switch, which is a Dell S6000 switch connecting to ISPs, which is a transit ISP and the peering ISP. So, so initially, all the traffic from the customer to the internet goes through a default route, which is given by the transit ISP. <coughs> So we are doing the OS 10 app. So this is the FIB optimization app we developed. So what it does is, whatever the routes it receives from the BGP, from the internet, it is not going to push completely to the hardware. So what we are going to do here is, we are running S-Flow agent on the switch, which monitors the top, top end flows, and then push, that, push those routes to the CAM table. So as Cliff mentioned about CPS APIs, um, you know, programmability of the switch, so we are using CPS API here to push those top end routes to the hardware. So that the packages we are using here is S-Flow agent on the switch, uh, Quagga BGP for getting all the BGP routes, and uh, uh, S-Flow collector, which is running on an external VM, which is S-Flow RT, to collect all the top end flows. And uh, we are running also the web server on the switch, which which, uh, which programs these routes using the CPS API. So we just call those CPS APIs using the HTTP get or HTTP push, and then we install all those routes in the hardware. So I can quickly show the demo on how it actually works on a Dell S6000 switch. So we are using Dell S6000 switch here. So I have uh, Ixia as an simulator, uh, which is connecting to the transit and uh, uh, you know, edge uh, pairing router. So S6000 switch is running OS10 software. So it is running a base version of the software. So it has the um, uh, Quagga BGP, which is getting all the BGP routes. And we are using CPS API, which we wrote a Python wrapper, which will call the um, uh, API to install all those routes into the hardware. So the use case is, I think, pretty straightforward. I think you guys got it. I mean, this is essentially trying to use a traditional top-of-rack switch in an internet-facing environment, where instead of downloading like 600,000 routes into the into uh, switch hardware, which you cannot because it's limited by the CAM space, uh, you select a few routes. And how do you select a few routes? You use S-Flow to identify the top-end routes and install those routes into the CAM table of the switch. In a way, you have sort of an internet-facing WAN switch, if you will. Yeah. And that's enabled with the CPS API. So that's one. Yeah. Was that? Yeah, exactly. You don't need to run BGP. Yeah, yeah, So for the bytes of memory, you don't need to run bytes of memory. Correct. For the routes, we are getting. Uh, we are have an external VM which is running BGP mm -hmm. to get all the BGP routes. Yes. And then we monitor the top end flows on the um, on the switch yep. coming from the customer to the internet, and then we come. We collect the BGP routes and we collect the S flow routes match it together, and then we have a route with the next stop information, Yes, and then we install those routes onto that. Put them switch. straight into the TCAM, or the layer 3 CAM, yes. one of the two. Yeah. What, I, what I would do is I would actually run some VMs with a route, reflect, like with Quagga in a VM, take a BGP peer with my upstream. That's what I did. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> That's a great idea. So this is <laughs> oh, I'm so clever. Oh. Amy. So I pair it with the with the ISP. So we get all the BGP routes, yep. and we monitor the um, S flow top inflows on the switch. We get all those information, club it together, and then we use CPS API to program the top inflows on the switch. See, he's as clever as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the limit? How many top flows can you identify? Uh, we are giving the sampling rate uh, of 256, and then uh, we are monitoring every every 60 seconds, yeah. and then we are checking what all the top end flows. So right now, if you see the S6000 with a Trident 2 platform, uh, it it has 32,000 uh, cam entries. But if you see the internet routes, uh, we have 500,000 internet routes, but only like 4% of the routes, maybe 15,000 or 20,000 or routes are active. The most commonly used. Route. Commonly used. So we only install those routes onto the hardware. But the remainder of the routes, we are not, we are not like, we are not caring, I mean, caring about that. We are just having a default route going to the transit AS. So the rest of, rest of the traffic are very minimal. So that all goes to the default route through the transit AS. So as the traffic flow starts, it might not be optimized, but within 60 seconds or two minutes, yes. it'll be optimized it'll per it'll be optimized. Yes. Right, yes. Right, right. I can show you the demo right now. So this is the, uh, this is the Exia um, uh, Explorer where I have the traffic coming from the customer. So this is the traffic coming from the customer. And uh, you have uh, two peers, one is to the transit and one is to the peering connection. Initially, all the traffic is going to a transit, which is, which is the default route coming from the transit. So switch is using the default route and to forward all the traffic to the transit. So now I'm gonna run the optimization uh, app, which will offload the traffic from the transit to the peer. So if you see now, the 70% of the traffic is going to uh, optimally forwarded to the peer, and rest of the traffic is going to the transit, right? So this is the uh, information we got. So this is, these are the uh, S-flow entries we got from the switch. These are the top end flows, which are 76 routes. And these are the total BGP routes I have, 500 routes. And then uh, it is running every one minute, so it is adding all the 76 routes onto the hardware. And then you can you can detect it here. So this is running every one minute. Uh, so so the next next one it is showing that hundred percent hundred hundred routes received from the S flow, and then it it install. So every time uh, new routes will come, the new routes. Uh, um, so the existing routes might be deleted, and the new routes will get added. You know that's that's the information is showing here. So route update route add is thirty two and route deleted is eight. So this is how it works. Um, you know, using this FIB optimization app. Correct, correct. very good. Thanks, uh, Madhu. This is, yeah. a, this is a good use case, and thank you for that. Uh, any questions before any questions? we move on to the next one?